Hi, welcome to this edition of Supply Chain Spotlight. I'm JT Angstrom. Joining me today is Joe Cubellis, Director at Alex Partners. Joe, uh, thank you for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me, and thanks for the continued collaboration with Alex Partners. Look forward yeah. to the discussion today, JT. Same here. This is this is sort of part two of the Alex Partners discussion. Part one featuring Jim Blazer, of course, um, and we did a, a deep dive on sort of current market uh, conditions and the disruptions within the supply chain, um, which if for those for those in the audience, if you have not watched that, you certainly I would recommend it. Uh, and, and that part one sets up as a great uh, baseline for the discussion, you know, Joe and I are going to have today regarding how shippers can deal with that disruption and really how to think about that. With that, Joe, before we kick off, can you tell us a little bit about your background just to give some context for the audience? Sure, sure, JT. So I, I have about 20 years of broad-based operations, supply chain, and P&L experience. Really have spent the majority of my career in industry in roles with increasing functional and P&L responsibility. Have done two separate stints in consulting. And, you know, I like to think of myself as somebody who brings a P&L owner mindset, um, a bias for action, and somebody who has delivered strong operational and financial results, both in industry and consulting. You know, so so a lot of times I'm, I'm working with clients whose jobs I have either done or touched before in industry. So I feel like that I have a good appreciation for the challenges that they're going through, I think, which brings us to the discussion today. Right. So, you know, we, we've been fielding a lot of questions about the disruption in the transportation markets and all that's going on around us. I mean, we've all been through quite a past 13 months, right? And, and you know, which is part of the reason we published the paper, the, the Seize the Moment, Shippers Must Address the Freight address freight Fundamentals, because, you know, myself and my colleagues have been getting a lot of questions from shippers on what can we do, right? We're faced with this disruption. What can we do about it? And, and that's that's really, you know, the main topic we wanted to talk about today. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a great introduction. And for purposes of focusing most heavily on, on, on that topic, we'll address the fact that market conditions over the last 15 months, again, as Jim and I discussed that at length on our last discussion, are very unique as a result of the pandemic. And there's a lot of volatility across all elements of the supply chain. And it's created, call it unique elements of disruption from top to bottom. Um, throughout all shipper supply chains. Um, <clears throat> and that's something we can talk about for a while. And, and that's not a surprise to anyone in the audience. And so for those looking for a dive on that, certainly tune into to my discussion that, that, that we've had previously with Jim Blazer. But with that, Joe, why don't we talk about, given that, let's talk about how shippers should be thinking about how to deal with those disruptions and what steps they can be taking to hedge their risk, ensure continuity, maintain um, inventory stocking and or on-time delivery mechanisms. There's there's a big bucket and a really rich discussion to be had with them there. Sure, absolutely. So I think the good news, JT, is that all is not lost for shippers, right? You know, I think, I think you know, we believe as a firm, and I believe specifically related to this disruption, that, that, that it brings an opportunity to, to shippers. Um, you know, it's it's not a market where shippers are likely to do a better job sourcing freight and save money by sourcing freight. I mean, it's not it's not that kind of market. That doesn't mean you don't focus on making sure you have the right relationships with carriers, making sure that you have competitive rates, making sure that that you're doing a good job sourcing. That's that's not the case, right? But what we're telling clients and what we believe is now is the right time to address fundamental characteristics of a shipment and the drivers of freight cost, right? Th these drivers are not new, you know, they are, they are fundamental. Um, but what we find in a lot of cases is our clients have thought about these drivers before. Um, they have, you know, they have dismissed them or, or dismissed optimizing them as reasons why the rest of the business needs to do things. And we can talk a little bit, of, a little bit more about that um, as we go forward. But really the, the drivers that we're talking about are four, okay? Urgency, 
So how long do I have to get a shipment from point A to point B? Clearly, shipping a full truckload is a much more optimal way um, of shipping freight than shipping an air, you know, an air LTL, an, L, an LTL sized air shipment, right? So for example, um, that needs to get from point A to point B in eight hours or 10 hours or 12 hours. Dimensions, how heavy or how much space is utilized by a shipment? Lead time, how much time do you give a carrier uh, regardless of mode to either accept or reject the load? And then distance, how far does a package need to travel or shipment need to travel to get from point A to point B? And those are really the four drivers that, that we're talking about with our clients regarding how do you, you know, what's the opportunity with this disruption? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a great overview. And so and so before talking about the four major criteria that you're, you're doing dives um, with your customers on, which I would like to dive on each of them. Uh, before you mentioned that, you, you talked about some of the challenges up front of, of uh, uh, crafting ownership and that perhaps the circumstance we're in is a good catalyst for enhancing the ownership element. Can we talk about that a little bit before we jump into the criteria? Because I think that's really, uh, it's a really important discussion topic um, and, and moves in tandem with discussions I've had that, that would argue that the uh, the role of the transportation manager or the supply chain uh, operations owner, title it however you want amongst these shipping entities has, has almost moved up in rank as a, sure. as a result of, of some of the challenges we've seen over the past five to 10 years. Sure, sure, sure. What happens, JT, is, is, is you know, the, dr the, the, the driver for, for these fundamentals is often owned outside of either the supply chain organization or, or the transportation function within the supply chain organization. So I, I can give you an example of a, of a past experience where I worked for a large industrial manufacturer and I, and I was in charge of supply chain with that industrial manufacturer. We were in a situation where we had a tremendous amount of expedited freight. And so, you know, in, in, the, in the monthly SNOP meetings and in, in the metrics reviews, the transportation team was, was, was under significant scrutiny around that expedited freight. The reality was we had issues and, issues and problems upstream in the manufacturing environment in terms of the way that plant managers were setting up and running parts that caused us to need to expedite, that caused you know, X million dollars of, of, of incremental freight cost that wasn't well understood within the organization, right? So I guess that's the second point, and then we can get into ownership, right? The second point is a lot of times companies and shippers and clients know that these, you know, know that, that, that some of these characteristics are suboptimal, but they haven't gone the extra step of understanding what impact that has on the organization. Right. So typically anecdotal, right? We do a lot of expedites, but what is the impact of those expedites compared to what an optimal way of, of, of shipping would be? Right. So when you think about, you know, when you think about ownership, right, really, and you're and you're talking about these fundamental drivers, really what, what we've been saying is the first step to optimize these drivers is to define ownership. Right. So who in the organization owns um, urgency, right? You know, you can think about that a bit, right? But, but, but a lot of the times a shipment is urgent because a customer expects it, right? So the sales force owns urgency, right? In, in some cases we need a raw, we need raw material to come in, you know, a, a company's raw material to come in to, to, to maintain a manufacturing schedule or maintain a customer shipment. You know, so whoever is responsible for procuring raw materials may own that urgency. But in both cases, both examples, not owned within maybe procurement owned within su supply chain, but, but, but certainly not urgency of customer shipments owned within transportation and supply chain. You think about dimensions as the second, you know, as the second characteristic. Who owns dimensions? 
who's who's responsible for packaging size, right? Making sure that we're using optimal packaging, making sure that we ship full no matter what the mode is, right? So are we weighing or cubing out trucks? Are we weighing, you know, are we are we weighing or cubing out um, you know, ocean freight? And who's responsible for that in the organization? A lot of times, you know, the transportation function is 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 responsible for ensuring we have the right rates in place to make those shipments, but who's responsible for that? Lead time. Right. So how much time am I giving carriers to optimize their networks with my freight? Generally owned, you know, in a lot of cases owned within the transportation organization, but something something to think about. And then distance. When you think about distance, you know, a lot of a lot of shippers have multinational or multi-site networks where they can they can make choices to ship or to manufacture or to or to distribute from multiple facilities. Who owns that decision? How do they think about transportation costs right in this new normal relative to you know the different cost of manufacturing something on a capable line in two two factories, for example. Right. But really that you know that's really the first step is understanding who within the organization owns it, owns that characteristic and defining that ownership. Yeah, that's a really interesting overview. And I think within that, you know, as you define ownership, <clears throat> there becomes the opportunity to start identifying good and bad owners and ways to optimize ownership and ways to optimize utilization of such factors, uh, which which makes me think of a quote, um, which which is uh, it's difficult to optimize a factor if you can't measure it. Right. And so. As we think about crafting measurement mechanisms uh, for these criteria, um, or, or better, better asked, how can we think about um, uh, putting forth measurement mechanisms for these criteria, realizing that they're, they, they, they may be simple in concept, but challenging in practice, right? Which is, you know, very, very common. Absolutely the case, right? And, and so when you think about the four dimensions that we talked about, right? I, so I think it's absolutely mission critical to put metrics and measurement in place around around these characteristics, no matter what. No matter what the market, no matter what the environment, understanding how your organization either optimizes or does not optimize these metrics and, and the financial impact, the financial and service impact of these characteristics is absolutely mission critical. Right. So, so let's let's talk about urgency as the first one. So, do do you know track non-standard shipments? Right. So track expedites. Understand the reason for expedites, the root cause for expedites. Um, get to that root cause. Understand what that fix might look like. Right. Because I think that's critical. That's a way. That's a way for for a company to, to save to save money. Um, think about delivery lead time. Right? Are there, you know, what is our what is our typical delivery lead time, and how, you know, is there is there a way to get more time in that delivery portion and potentially spend less time in the upfront part of the supply chain potentially? Dimensions. Do do you know track utilization, track truckload utilize, utilization, track um, you know container utilization, track track you know whether it's you know whether you're, you're shipping material that either cubes out or weighs out. Make sure you have a good understanding of that. Lead time, I think, that relatively straightforward. Track tender time. Try to get as much tender time as possible in order to allow any sort of carrier to optimize their network, and you become a more preferred shipper. Distance. You know we talked about this already, but distance is maybe a little bit more difficult. This is where you're starting to balance. The cost of transportation with transportation cost and service with things you know other other things in the supply chain so the example i used earlier was if i have two manufacturing lines in two different locations and i have capacity free capacity i've cho chosen to produce in one of the locations for a reason well in, in a market like we have today you know if that decision was made because I can manufacture at a, at a lower cost, 
and now I have transportation at a higher cost, potentially that decision should be revisited, right? But but I think I think having that data at your fingertips is really kind of the second point behind defining ownership. So once you have ownership, are you tracking it, right? And are you tracking it in a way that it's just not anecdotal, but it has a financial or or service impact or a customer impact, something that's important to you know the entire organization. Which ties into the next natural step of once you identify a framework framework with which you can use to manage an element of the supply chain and you then take the next step of identifying how to measure it, you can think about optimizing or at least enhancing it, improving it, increasing the efficiency, however you want to define it. Um, yeah, for sure. The, the final the final you know natural step or next natural step becomes, you know, how do you drive continuous improvement? Sure, sure. Right. Yeah. And, you know, I think, JT, it's important not to think about those three steps, right? Define ownership, measure, and then drive improvement. It's, it's, I think it's important not to think about them sequentially, right? I, clearly, you need all three. But, but if you know that there's a problem somewhere, go right to the problem, fix the problem, and don't worry about measuring it, measuring it until, you've, until you've fixed the problem, right? So, so not necessarily sequentially, but if you think about urgent. And, and I think the other thing that we like to think about is what can I do today? You know, what can I do this week or, or, or tomorrow? What can I do within a couple of weeks? And what can I do within a month, right? Or, or a couple of months. And so when you think about urgency, can I make it a little bit difficult for my organization to, um, to, to, to ship in an expedited freight way, right? That takes days, right? Um, and, and, and oftentimes you'll find that you'll find that, that 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 will have results pretty quickly. Can I can you know can I reduce service level expectations for long, longer transits given given the marketplace, right? Potentially takes weeks. Can I use consolidation service that trade off uh, transit time for cost savings, you know, weeks. And these things can be reversed if we, you know, if we end up in a in a more loose or or a more normal whatever that might be transportation market. And then, you know, a little bit longer term, can I understand and can I tackle and eliminate root causes for expedites, which oftentimes takes you, you know, upstream into the supply chain organization. Think about dimensions, right? So dimensions, can I, you know, can I eliminate wasted space on a load by, um, you know, figuring out how to package a little bit better? Can I work with my customers to adjust minimum order quantities and, and load trucks a little bit more efficiently? Lead time. Can I put process controls in that require ample time for, you know, for tender? Can I, you know, can I put a process in place or can I put a, a measurement mechanism in place that communicates needs to freight uh, carriers in, in the most specific level possible with the most, with the most lead time? And then density, or I'm sorry, distance. So can I ship product direct to customers where density allows and, and, and reduce unneeded steps within the supply chain? Can I, you know, can I revisit product plant allocations or product plant DC allocations based on the new freight dynamics to, you know, to optimize distance in, in a more effective manner? So I think those are some of the things that, that we think about. I mean, I'm sure there, there's, a, there's a much longer list. But I think what you can appreciate is these are all things that are fundamental. They are things that drive freight cost and service, and, and they are things that that shippers control and should control. Right, right, and and you know sh should control it should 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 make the effort to enhance those controls because you know the one thing that's certain in the supply chain space is that. There will always be unforeseen disruption. Um, it's sort of it's sort of uncertainty seems to be the one certainty in this market. One hundred percent. That's absolutely the truth. <clears throat> and so, uh, with that, this is this is a very uh, rich and helpful overview of how you think about uh, enhancing you know shipper supply chains and how they can deal with said disruptions. Again, it's and it's not just dealing with disruptions after they happen. It's also putting in the structures to be prepared for forthcoming ones that that you know we don't have visibility into but we sort of know will occur right sure, absolutely and so with that we're, we're coming close to an end joe 
Are there any final thoughts for the audience, you know, in sum total uh, ahead of ahead of signing off? Yeah, I think I think just a couple of things, JT. I think I think you, you said it, you know, you touched you touched on it um, a minute ago. But, you know, given what we've you know, what we've been through the last, you know, the last 14 or 15 months, you know, I think the only thing for certain is, is that, you know, disruptions are going to continue in, in freight markets and other markets for years to come. Right. I think this, you know, this disruption specifically um, presents an opportunity for shippers to do a better job understanding uh, the fundamental characteristics of, of, of a shipment and what drives their freight cost. And, and the reality is having that understanding, whether or not you act on it, or if you just act on it for a, a short period of time, allows you to act on it, right? So, so assigning ownership, putting metrics in place and understanding the fundamental impacts will allow you to use that as a, as a, as a variable in, in your, your decision-making moving forward. And I think the last thing I would say, JT, it's something that I didn't mention. And, and, and I think it's, it's something that our, you know, our supply chain audience will probably uh, cheer and potentially our commercial audience uh, may boo a bit, but, you know, th this is all making front page news, right? So, so, so Suez Canal, I mean, that was on TV, even, you know, folks that don't understand uh, or don't care about freight markets have seen these disruptions, right? And I think, I think th with that brings an opportunity where people expect to pay more for freight in this market. So, so make sure you fulfill those expectations. Yeah, I, I think that makes a lot of sense. And that's a great overview. Um, with that, Joe, we're coming, we're coming to a close. Thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure to have you on. We, we hope to have you on again. Thanks. Great discussion. I, I really enjoyed it, JT. Absolutely. And, and we will do it again. So thank you very much. And, and, and with that, uh, Joe Cubellis, Director of Alex Partners, thank you for joining us. I'm JT Anchor with Freightways. Have a great day.